Hi, welcome to In the Kitchen with Ashley Marie. Today I'm sharing one of the top recipes from my site for the last five years, and it is homemade Andes mints. They're super easy to make and they taste amazing. So let's get started. The very first thing that we need to do is to get the pan ready for the chocolate. I'm going to measure where this edge is right here and then go over and kind of stick my fingernails into the other edge. And then you can either rip it or cut it or leave it folded. We wanna leave both ends there so we can have something to grab and pull up with. There's two ways you can melt the chocolate to make these homemade Andes mints. You can either put all three, the layers, the 10 ounces of chocolate, 10 ounces of the green, 10 ounces of the chocolate again, in, uh, in separate bowls and put them in your oven and cook them on low. And then it gets this nice, even uh, heat to it that's actually a really great way to go. But I have a microwave with a melt chocolate button and I love it. Um, and so I actually use it to melt all my chocolate these days. Now, if you don't wanna do the oven way and you don't have a melt chocolate way, you can always use your microwave still, bring it down to 50% heat and do it for a minute. And then after that, do it for 30 second intervals. And our chocolate's done. Everything is nice and smooth. Now, to get our parchment paper to stick to our pan, I'm just gonna actually take a little bit of this chocolate, not much, and just dab it into each corner. Right now, it just tastes like chocolate, but we want it to taste like mint, so it's an Andes mint. Now, when I say mint, I don't mean the leaf mint that's like toothpaste mint, Ugh. I mean peppermint. That's really the only mint that I ever use in cooking and baking. So this is actually special oil for, uh, for candy. So it works really well with chocolate. If you use any flavoring that's water-based and you add it to chocolate, it's gonna make your chocolate seize and you don't want that. So this is really strong and very concentrated. So we just wanna add a couple drops to each of the three layers. Now stir it so that that mint, oh, it smells so good. So that that mint permeates all of the chocolate. And now because this is our bottom layer, we don't have to be quite as careful as we're gonna be on the other layers, but this is a good layer to practice on. So I'm going to kind of pour it in strips and then keep filling in as much as I can. Andy's mints are actually pretty thin, which means each of the three layers are pretty thin. So while it looks like this isn't gonna cover the entire pan, I promise it will. Now, it's still not perfectly smooth. We got a lot of lines in it, but the chocolate is still warm, so we can work with that. So this is gonna be really loud, but what we're gonna do is shake the pan, and that's gonna kinda help it settle. Now we're ready to let the chocolate set, but we don't want it to set completely, because if it gets too hard, then when we go to pour the next layer on top, they won't actually connect. So we want it to just set up enough that they're not gonna like intermix super easily. So what we're looking for is right now, there's a, a shine on our chocolate and we're looking for that shine to get dull. So this is actually a great time to wash out our container, add our next amount of chocolate and get it melted since it's gonna take a while. And then by that point, it's usually ready to go. All right, now notice I'm holding the, the, the jar, the glass <laughs> measuring jar really close because I, what I don't want to do is like have this um, chocolate drop from a far distance and kind of hit it with some force and melt into it a little bit. We really just kind of want it to sit on top. Right there, I dipped into that chocolate. This green is warm and it's melting that chocolate layer underneath. So we want to be a really light touch and really smooth as we go back and forth. So don't feel like you need to rush. Take your time. It's not perfect, it's kind of bumpy, but we're gonna shake it down again. And one of the ways, if you can't tell by the sheen, if it's ready or not, if you touch it and it leaves little fingerprints but doesn't come off on your hand, like you don't, the chocolate doesn't come off, then it's ready. Just like before, we don't wanna mix it too much into the screen layer, so I'm gonna hold it down low. If you get a little bit of mixing in that middle layer, 
It's not oh, too bad, but we really want this top layer to be pretty because it's the part that everybody sees. So of course you want it to be the prettiest layer. It's better to move the pan to a position that's comfortable for your hand, since I'm right-handed, I like to work on the left-hand side, than to try to uncomfortably get to a side that um, that's just not natural. It'll be a lot harder. So I tend to work top and left. Um, so I always turn my pan to wherever I need it to be to make that happen. Now shake. We're gonna let this set a little bit more than we did before. Not only do we want it to go dull, but we also wanna take it a little bit past dull uh, so that we can cut it without it still being soft anywhere because we don't want to cut and have, um, have there still be any warm chocolate at all. Uh, we also don't want to wait until it's completely set and hard to cut it because otherwise it'll just crack. So there's just nice in-between stage that we're looking for. So they'll go dull and then I would say another 10 minutes past dull. In order to get nice even lines, I actually use a level. Uh, you can also just use like a yardstick if you have one, but I'm in the middle of unpacking still and I don't know where mine is. So. We're gonna cut off just the edges. One, because their edges are a little bit rounded, and uh, two, to give, so we have nice sharp, um, nice sharp corners to our Andy's mints squares or rectangles or whatever, whatever shape you're cutting. And this just kind of helps you keep a nice even line. Now I'm just gonna use the same method to cut everything. All done with our Andy's mints and we're ready to try it and see how we did. So we can see those beautiful layers of the chocolate, the green and the chocolate. It smells like peppermint, has a nice break to it. Mmm. <laughs> and it tastes just like Andy's mints. <laughs> it really is so good. It's such a great treat. It's no wonder that it's one of my most popular recipes. Are you guys ready to try them? Yes, we are. All right. We are. <laughs> great, grab one. All right, what do you think, baby boy? It looks awesome. It's awesome? Good. All right, can you talk yet? No? All right, maybe next time just take a bite, not a whole mouthful. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. I have a lot of fabulous recipes coming up. And leave a comment if you have a recipe, a cake, or tutorial you want to see me do.